Today, I'm going to show you how to link up Notion with Google Calendar using a two-way sync. And we're going to be using a paid third-party tool that I am an affiliate of, meaning if you click the link below this video, I will get a small kickback from this company if you sign up for one of their paid plans to sync up your calendar with Notion. Now, I'm gonna to go to the pricing. And before you get triggered, just remember that this right here, this plan, this solo plan, is the price of a Starbucks coffee or a pack of cigarettes, I think. I've never bought a pack of cigarettes, but I think maybe a pack of cigarettes might even cost more than this. So when I give you guys this pricing, don't go down and make the comment section your sounding board of how you want a free solution to this problem. Trust me guys, if there was a free solution out there that actually worked, that was reliable, I'd be sharing it here. It would be the first thing. I would love to share a free solution. Notion is a free tool for the most part, and I love sharing that tool for the community here. I create lots of videos that are free to you to watch here on YouTube. So don't complain that this is a paid tool. Just use it or don't use it. It's as simple as that. Okay, if you want a bit of a faster sync or you want to connect it with multiple uh, different workspaces, then you can get the 14 a month or the 49 a month, which I think both of these are way overkill, to be honest with you. You just need the solo for most people, I would think. So you can get started and you can move through this. I have the link below this video if you want to use my affiliate link, or you can just search up Notion Automations and find this yourself so that I don't get paid for referring you. That's fine with me too. Once you have an account, you hit go to application and you hit the Google Calendar two-way sync with Notion. And here you're gonna add a calendar connection. Just hit new Google Calendar connection, continue with Google, and find your Google Calendar account. Hit continue. And finally, select the calendar or calendars that you wanna use. I'm just going to select one calendar. I'm gonna hit continue. And where it says, let's connect your Notion account, I'm just gonna select my Notion workspace. I'm gonna hit new Notion connection. I'm gonna hit next. And I'm gonna hit select pages to share with Notion automations. Unless you just wanna use their template, that's fine as well. It will generate a workspace for you that connects Notion with Google Calendar and you'll have the database right there. So it takes some of the legwork out of it. But if you're a productive brain user, then you can just do select pages to share with Notion automations. Or if you have your own database, you can do this as well. Hit select pages. And then you're gonna to wanna to find your tasks database or your events database. Mine is tasks and it's under Carter's brain. I have multiple tasks databases here. I wanna make sure I connect the right one. So just make sure you look at the breadcrumbs here and find the right event and then hit, or the right database and then hit it. And then hit allow access. And it worked for me. If it gives you an error at this point, then that means that you need to go into Notion, remove the connection, and then add it back. You can even ask the little help chat down here exactly how to do that and it will tell you. It's an AI and it tells you exactly how to do it. That's what I had to do. Okay, once you have the connection made, you then wanna hit connect your Notion database. And you wanna hit use a custom Notion database. At this point it says add Notion automations as a connection to your database. So I'm gonna head over and make sure that I've done that. So we'll go to Notion. And in the productive brain, if you're following along, you'll go to your tasks database. You'll click on the three dots in the corner and you'll make sure that the Notion Automations connection is added down here. If it is, you're good to go. You can head back and you can hit continue. Now it says, now let's select the database that will store your events. Make sure you're selecting the database, not a view and not a page. Like I said, if you're in the productive brain, you just go down to your databases right here and you click on the database itself. And then you're gonna click up in the corner again on these three dots and you're gonna hit copy link. Then you're gonna head back over to Notion Automations and hit continue. And you're gonna paste that database link here. Then hit add database. 
And now it should give you some confetti and that means that it worked. I'm gonna hit continue. And at this point, it wants to do some field mapping. So we're gonna map the event name in Google Calendar to task in Notion. Task is the name of my task. And where it says date, I wanna map that to the action date. Say you have a meeting URL or something like that in Google Calendar, well, you can add a field. And these are all the different things that you can add in, like conference call link, for instance. And I can link that up with any of the properties in here. If I don't have a property for a link, then I could create one in Notion so that this links up with Notion for me. To do that, you would literally just go into Notion, add a property to your database. We'll just call it, well, we'll search URL, click on that. And I'm just gonna call this meeting link. And I'll need to refresh Notion fields, add a field, conference call link, and then I can select the meeting link field right there. You can do this with any sort of field that you want here so that you can update a Google Calendar field with a Notion field and vice versa. Once you're done there, just hit continue. So if I hit add condition, it's going to allow me to filter based upon these different items here. I just wanna filter where the event title contains birthday or we'll add another condition event title contains B day and sync notion pages when none of the following are true because I don't want it to sync in birthdays because I, okay, I'm gonna hit continue and it says, do you wanna set default values for notion? I'm gonna hit add default notion value, focus, and I'm gonna select meeting. Okay, I want it to show up as meeting when something comes in from Google Calendar. Even if it's not a meeting, it's likely that if I'm adding something to Google Calendar, it has a specific time that it needs to be done. So if I'm using the productive brain, I'm gonna select the focus of meeting. This doesn't matter as much for you if you're not using productive brain, but this is the recommended way to do it if you are. You can also add a page value here, like this calendar icon. I prefer that because then I can see what came in from Google Calendar and what was created in Notion. So this just kind of indicates that it originally came from Google Calendar and it's going to take precedence over other things that are sorted with it on the same day. So now I'm gonna hit continue. And at this point, I'm just going to call this productive brain plus Google Calendar. We can have this add a Notion link that links up with the Notion page below the description of each event. I don't want to do this. And then there's this deletion here. If you delete something in Notion, you can have it delete in Google Calendar if you turn this on. But by default, if you delete an item from Notion, we just unsync it instead of permanently removing it in Google Calendar and same with vice versa here. This is a conservative approach and will let you delete items manually, which would prevent irreversible mistakes, which I prefer because it's very easy to delete something in Notion. It doesn't double check with you as it does in Google Calendar. So I'm just gonna leave this off as well because I don't want it to delete an item if I delete it in Notion. I don't want it to delete it in Google Calendar and vice versa. I can just do it manually if something really needs to get deleted or canceled. It's not that hard. Okay, I'm gonna show settings here. And this is important, this advanced settings here. So show advanced settings, syncing time frame. How far back do I want it to sync? Well, I'm just gonna sync it like two days behind. I don't really need it to sync that far back. So we'll go two days behind. And then how far ahead do I want to sync it? I'm gonna sync it one month ahead so that it has everything for the next month that I'm looking at synced. I prefer that. Okay, now default calendar event duration when no end date time is provided on Notion. This is gonna be up to you. If you don't want it to take up all of your day, then you can just select one hour or you can just select 24 hours if you want it to fill up your calendar. For me, I'll just leave this at one hour because I can always change the time range inside of Notion if I wanna block something out for a longer period of time. Sync frequency. So this is how often it syncs. I would just max it out for whatever plan you have. I'm gonna go with the five minutes because that's what I have the plan for. And then this next one here, sync notion entries that were created before the first sync. I'm going to do that. I want the entries that I currently have in notion 
to be synced up. And then ignore notion entries that are currently linked with other automations. That is good. I'm going to have that on ignore in case you already created an automation and you don't want to see duplicates. If you've never used this tool, chances are you don't need this on, but why not have it on if it's just going to avoid duplicates? Then I'm going to hit continue. And it says, now let's test it out. So I'm going to hit test synchronization. I'm going to hit start the sync now. And right here, it says 22 items in sync. You'll notice that these are in their rightful place in the calendar. So this has been how to link Notion with Google Calendar. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. This is the best method out there that I've been able to personally find so far. So if you find a better one, leave it in the comments below and I'll make a video about it, especially if it's free. I would love to create a video on one that's free, but this is just the best solution right now and it's paid. So that's that. We'll see you in the next one.